<laughs> hey, are we live. literally live? We're literally live. <laughs> we are literally live. Hey, everybody. It's Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. You know what that means? It is Iron DM, where we have... Um... Oh, is it just David? And... It's I... just us. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm going to win then. That's that's fine. That's we'll, all we'll there skip is. That. No, no, I'm participating too. Oh, you're part. Well, I still win. That's fine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Guys, uh, we are Murder Hobo Inc. You can follow us on Twitch. You can follow us on Twitter. You can take a look at our YouTube archive. You can uh, hit us up at mhoboinc at gmail.com if you want to join in on any games. This week, we have no games uh, for you to join in. We have Thursday cred. They're off the ship. They're on the island, and I'm going to kill them all in their sleep. Uh, and then, of course, the Calamity, the Cacophony, the... No, Calamity. 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 Cacophony. Cala- you... <sighs> We just need one more C campaign, and then we. It's just called alliteration. It all to, I, it's alliteration. Oh, never mind, never mind. that last one, yeah. Brad <laughs> calamity and cacophony. cacophony. <laughs> I was going to say something else, but that's all right. <laughs> no, I think Cthulhu is spelled with a K sometimes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I was but, thinking of the fence post. <laughs> oh, Carol's uh, hepatitis. Yeah. Fence post. <laughs> Hepatitis Carol's Fence Post. Wow. It's the new scent coming out, uh, but we'll talk about those people later. Oh, man. Poor Carol. Before we She's get just on to that. Expect another email, Kyle. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure Our it's Frank. <laughs> yeah, we just print them out. It's real nice, everything like that. Uh, if you uh, do want to join in, though, next Saturday is going to be the open one shots where you can join in. Uh, until then, if you just can't wait, you're holding on to your britches. Join us over at the Discord channel where we are uh, on top of talking about multiple things. We are building up for some huge secret, but we're not going to tell you about that. Uh, we're tighter lipped than Beckna's hand and eyeball. I don't know. But it's I awesome. It it's is awesome. awesome. It is awesome. Uh, supposedly. Uh, <laughs> We'll Guys, <laughs> if you can't stand looking at our faces, we do have an audio-only podcast. Mm-hmm. It does get updated every once in a while. Uh, ah, we are up to date. Except for this one. Except for this goddamn one. Yeah, one. that's right. That's what I thought. <laughs> uh, and finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice. For one, you're rolling like shit. Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, if you do end up getting their dog shit dice... Uh, then I also just suggest going over to Oddfish Games and getting their Adventure Sense. Uh, the Putrid Sewers will stack on the Pirate Dog Poop dice, uh, but it somehow evens it out in this way that's a romantic, no, aromatic, and... Well, you just have to try it for yourself, honestly. Oh, Don't geez. set anything on fire, though. Uh, finally, they also do have a couple other things. How to RPG with your cat. Uh, that's not going on right now that I'm aware of. Not yet. But keep an eye out in the future, because I hear it's coming back, and that is a fun game to play or watch. Uh, and then the Shine Project, for if you are writing your story. Uh, specifically a story, but you can twist a few things here and make it into your campaign at D and D. Uh, but also keep an eye out because they're coming up with some, uh, a D and D version. Well, not D and D version, a game version of it. And it asks all the important questions that you wish you had thought yourself. I guess that's it. And all I have to do now is go around for introductions. I am Kyle. I DM the cred campaign, the greatest, uh, it's a campaign, guys, with Cthulhu <laughs> uh, uh, and horrible things happening to my players on a bi-weekly basis. That is once every two weeks, not twice every week, because I would kill myself. Uh, and then, Welcome to my world. <laughs> oh my gosh, I did the horrible thing, and now I'm running a second campaign for someone else now. And yeah, I, I shouldn't have. I should have said no. <laughs> <laughs> but You're cheating on us, Kyle. <laughs> you can tell us more about that. Uh, I'm Frank. I still have all my hair, despite all the games that I run. Uh, hey. I uh, and mm. he he forgot to mention if you want like a cool shower curtain or duvet cover or phone case or cool shirts, plunger. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, not plunger. Dildor yeah. warmer. 
Wow. Uh, wow. Tinyurl.com slash RPG You pull on the arm out. and out of the knife comes some KY and Jelly, I, it's awesome. And I don't think you mentioned the uh, Discord channel, so Carol will be I did mention you. the Discord Did you? Okay. Uh, okay. So we got that. Uh, I'm Frank. If you've been here at all, uh, you should recognize me. If you've been here before, thanks for coming. Uh, if this is your first time here, thanks for showing up. We are for mature audiences only, uh, so if uh, we are not your flavor, please move along and find something that you will find more entertaining. Uh, we're doing this all in just good fun, so don't take offense at us uh, because we probably don't know you. Yeah. Uh, we are more offensive to your face than anything else. Uh, I run the Calamity campaign as well as the Cacophony campaign and most of the one shots. Uh, we hope to see you on Saturday, but don't forget if you like the horror of Cthulhu, check out Kyle's uh, cred campaign. Uh, other than that, you can get me at, at Philbar RPG when I'm not offending people with my ongoing commentary of how shitty Republicans are. Over to you, David. <laughs> All right, to follow that up. Hey, I'm David, everybody. <laughs> I play on the Calamity campaign, and I'm also on our never ending soap opera, Cacophony. Anyway, uh, yeah, I play Zadar on Cacophony, and Ingve and Crow in the Calamity campaign, A side and B side. Uh, other than that, you can find me here most days, most most Tuesdays on BTR. So I usually have something witty to say, sometimes not. So did I miss all those episodes? Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I think those are the episodes that you were producing and you walked away. <laughs> Changed the channel. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh man. So oh, yeah, dead air is killing us. <laughs> it is, it is, it's it's killing us. So I wasn't aware that I was supposed to carry both of you on my you back are like the You're mighty, not... mighty man I am. <laughs> but uh before I win this iron DM contest later this evening, we did have did we miss a Frank 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 generational game? Uh it uh, because of our very, very awesome special project. Uh, and it being Mother's Day, uh, we had cancer. Yeah, it was. Turns out even Franks love their mothers. Who knew? Mm -hmm. Not their mothers. Mine's dead. Thank you for rubbing that in, Kyle. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. The wound is now open again, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> what cemetery was that at? Just out of curiosity. Uh, she's Lot? she's right. She is right over there on the mantle. Uh, oh. She was cremated. <laughs> oh, that's. That's gross. I always worry about inhaling dead relatives when they get cremated. I do have that uh, issue on occasion. She's so. in a bag and, and in a wooden container. So I, I, I could tell you horror stories, man. <laughs> oh. Oh, so yeah, we'll, we'll have extra time. Tonight. I'm the mortician. So there you go. <laughs> I loved you and that's Gomez right. together. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my figure was, uh, you know, a little more curvy back then. <laughs> Are we going with like the Uma Thurman or one of the other two? No, we're going with uh, hmm, that the uh, war two, two, yeah. We'll go with the third one, the young one, uh, Wednesday when she grew up and wore the outfit. Christina Ritchie, mm -hmm. if you haven't seen Christina Ritchie as Morticia Adams, Google it. You will be impressed. All right, guys. And, and if I you remember right that, back. you're really old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Christina Richie. Hold on, guys. We can go ahead and wait here for a second. Wow. We just want to hey, David. Out. How about you discuss uh, the first offering while Kyle derails us? <laughs> okay. Our first offering for tonight is a recap. A recap of Cacophony. <laughs> yeah, that's what we have. Uh, Cacophony, we we're finishing up our episodes in the the realm of the cloud giants uh yeah our home renovation show <laughs> which uh yeah finally caught up with us yeah well it meme, was weird <laughs> yeah meme, one of the cloud giants uh yeah found all the damage at <laughs> zadar and uh yeah daphne managed to do throughout the place um and yeah there was a little bit of a hell to pay uh we 
we we kicked off the episode with our battle against the HVAC system, you know, an air elemental. And it was pretty close. Zadar was down to two hit points. Anyway, uh, yeah, we thw- thwarted the thing a little bit with the uh, help of a uh, tapestry that we that Daphne cut down and kind of let go into the room. And uh, yeah, just all kinds of chaos unfo- uh, unfurled with that. But we ended up getting a break. Uh, somehow the air elemental collapsed back into its tube and we were kind of spared. Uh, after that, we investigated the, I said, hole in the wall <laughs> and that alerted the meme to what? What the fuck, more damage? So anyway, yeah. So we went and investigated the opening in the wall and uh, we found the lost staff. Yes, we found the Duggars. Yes, the Duggars. Yeah, you know that that dwarf, that underground dwelling dwarf. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we found the Duggars. That's what we're calling them. And uh, yeah, negotiated their their work terms for them. Uh, they were disgruntled employees of uh, in service to the previous owner, the Jin of the house. We informed them the Jin is gone. It's under new management. And Zadar and Camille were hired, well, forced by the Tuggers to negotiate uh, terms of their new employment contracts. So turns out everybody's satisfied. The Duggars had an engineer among them and was able to fix all the stuff. Of course, our crew had to help out and take a cut from our... our uh, yeah, our fee for for the home inspection. So everything seemingly turned out fine. There was an ample amount of food for us to get uh, the airship going again, which the Duggars also did the modifications on Aerosmith's airship. So it's pretty sweet. Anyway, uh, oh, and plus there was an incident with the uh, Blue Java banana. So in case... You're going to have to watch the Margu campaign. It all comes together. Anyway, yeah, if you ever get offered a blue banana that tastes like ice cream, yeah, don't eat it. <laughs> so, don't, don't eat 50 of them. Don't eat 50 <laughs> of them. <laughs> oh, man. So as we get on our way, uh, we run into a conflict with the map. Uh, we think uh, we should follow the map. Aerosmith is saying, no, I think it's transposed, that it's the other direction we got to go. But he listens to us instead. And we end up off course. We follow the map and we are off to another continent that we had no idea was out there. Um, well, only in <coughs> from legend anyway as we see the new coastline we discovered that it is uh frozen forests and mountains and things like that we are in freckland now so home of our friends the berserkers stinky so (laughs) so we crash land on on freckland there's a battle with the local wildlife and um yeah that's where we ended it so that pretty much sums up the episode. So yeah, now we're stranded in Feckland with a damaged airship. So we'll see how this goes. It'll be fine. Yeah. Ah, always whining. Jesus. We know Frank. Yeah, you're gonna be fine. Yeah. You'll oh, be yeah. fine. Probably riches. <laughs> Beyond your wildest dreams and imaginings. I can Definitely. picture DeForest Kelly. It's gonna be beyond our wildest dreams, probably. <laughs> The dreams of avarice. Yes, that too. So he was a greedy little lantern thingy, wasn't he? Anyway, Forrest Kelly. He was uh, Bones McCoy. Bones McCoy. Yeah. If you watch Star Trek Four. Oh no, I don't watch Star Trek. What? <laughs> <laughs> and with that silence, we will bring Frank to the forefront. Bait and hooked. What happened at Moray Cove, Frank? Holy on Saturday? shit. You're no... I did see, I did no see the one with Chris Bine and Zoe Saldana. 
and yeah, those uh, are Zachary good. Quinto. Oh, uh-huh. just the first one. I didn't watch any of the other ones. because uh, You got to watch the third one. That's really good. Oh. Anyway, episode 241 was Moray Cove. Uh, four first level adventures featuring two brand new murder hobos. Uh, uh, Heidi and John also were there. Uh, they were trying to catch the ferry leading across the bay over to Cathaway. However, due to uh railroading them they missed the ferry uh landing them in town overnight they were approached by several people made several new friends and discovered that there was a spirit a ghost an apparition a undead spirit abounding the area that has uh, started to destroy the eel fishing um uh community and it wasn't john it was uh ian Ian was yeah, there. Ian. Uh, was my there. bad. Uh, and Ian played a uh, environmentalist, uh, and he did it really well. So, what in a crustacean priest or something like that? He, he was a cleric of crustacea. So, nice. uh, in green room, we had several discussions on the deity's name. Uh, most of them were really inappropriate uh, for the show and that's with mature audiences only anyway uh part of the deal to go ahead and deal with this problem uh was that the eel fishermen would have to make certain concessions uh moray cove is of course the uh eel oil uh export location for the basin area uh as was repeated multiple times anyway after getting into a fight with the sailors they uh, went ahead and uh, accepted the deal from the mayor slash magistrate slash biggest mouth in the tavern. And they went out on a quest to discover uh, where this apparition might be. They had two locations to choose from. One was a lighthouse and one was uh, slimy Steve's fishing hut. Uh, according to one individual, uh, Slimy Steve's Fishing Hut was the likely location. Uh, the game itself for production value offers the DM the opportunity to put them at either end and uh, run the game as long as you need. For Murder Hobo Inc., since we only had two hours, I determined that, sure, it would be in Slimy Steve's place. Uh, they ended up fighting uh, a few creatures, uh, including some troglodytes, which I don't use very often. The stench caused two of the four to fight at disadvantage. Uh, they then discovered that they were being followed by a small girl. Uh, they sent her away with a magic reed with light cast on it. Uh, but as luck would have it, their next encounter with a crocodile, uh, one of the individuals tossed his mighty war hammer into the reeds uh, <laughs> and had to fight unarmed for a while. Uh, after the completion of the fight, the young girl reappeared holding Thor's hammer, uh, further complicating the situation because now it was pitch dark and clearly you cannot send an eight-year-old off into the dark, uh, despite what most of them wanted to do. Uh, as they reach Slimy Steve's fishing hut, sure, why not? Lightning and thunder. Uh, Ian was smart enough to realize that being in metal armor was a bad idea. Everybody made rolls. Two and the girl uh, kind of choked on their rolls and were knocked a little bit stupid. Uh, inside Slimy Steve's fishing hut, uh, they found a great deal of things, including uh, the apparition, which, spoiler alert, uh, inhabited the body of the little girl. Uh, the party was not the least bit reluctant to hammer away <laughs> at, the, at the small child, showing indeed why we were all murder homos at heart. Uh, Fortunately for them, they were successful in their quest to determine what the problem was and how to resolve it. Unfortunately for them, when they returned back to town, yet again, they missed the damn ferry because this scenario has the opportunity to go from first level to second and then second to third. Uh, whether or not we ever played that half, who knows? Uh, but everybody had a good time. Always bringing in new blood helps, so we had a we had a fun time. <clears throat> that be it. That be it. That be uh, it. 
Oh, okay. uh, and, oh. And, and if you oh, want to join more. us, if you want to join us, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail, like Kyle said earlier. Uh, <laughs> not this week, but next week. Yep. Two. Mm-hmm. Man. 310 to Yuma was a good movie. What are you Googling? I'm not Googling. <laughs> he's Googling. Well, yeah, I saw he's Christina Googling. Ritchie, and then I was like, okay. And then what happened on Sunday? Oh, yeah, Mother's Day was Sunday, and and even bad men love their mother, Sheriff. Uh, that was uh, Russell Crowe as he killed the Marshal. Marshal, uh, uh, who had been chasing him for quite a while, threw him right over a cliff after smashing his head in with a rock. And folks, if you want to watch yeah. Pretend to Yuma. <laughs> I think it was on Amazon. Maybe Hulu. <laughs> I don't know. One of the I, you know what? I had to buy it on the Microsoft Store. Wow. But hey, I'm done. I don't have to fill in Dead Space anymore. That that's your job, Frank, as <laughs> that, the the host of uh, Iron DM tonight. That's true. Kyle was lazy. Didn't bother to participate in anything. Didn't run anything. Just real, didn't watch anything. Just just a real bag of ass for us. Uh, Pretty much. That, Doesn't bring notes to his game. <laughs> hey, oh. <laughs> Notes down here below me now. It's all good. Bam. Oh, you see that, that light? That's, that's right. Notes. Yeah. <laughs> we we do like his new table. Folks, as Kyle's pointed out, this is Iron DM. Uh, when we do this, these guys are usually given a certain set of circumstances as rolled by dice uh, prior to the game in green room. Each one of them, including myself, rolled a D4. Uh, the map that you see on the bottom of your screen has four continents or land masses. Uh, first one was David. He rolled a two, so he will be on that sandy area over there to the right. Kyle rolled the one. He will be in the upper left in the green and dusty place. And I rolled a three. I am in the bottom left in the green and mountainous region. So uh, by successful order, we will start with Kyle. Kyle, what did you name your country? Okay. I totally misunderstood (laughs) and I did the entire map. But since I don't have to do that anymore, I'm going to say the country is Turnion. Uh, And one of the unique things about this country is that uh, it does have one major city and, and of course, ruins of another. It doesn't have anything else. What you don't know is that is uh, that city is Medina, which is known also as the Growing City. It moves. Uh, it is a city that grows and moves across the countryside. Whenever it hits water, it turns direction and goes a different way. Uh, it's a fey city. Um, and whoa, 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 you're getting ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. Oh, 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 <laughs> you want me to uh, just let you ask all the questions as I answer everything? We're going we're gonna to cycle through this. Otherwise, oh, we'll get done gotcha. way early. So, Turnium, okay, why is it called Turnium? Uh, because I saw three land masses, and I thought that this section of the map, this country, would be uh, good for three, so I named it Turnium. Uh, and then I realized that I only had one section of it, and I said, screw it, we're calling it the same thing for that one section. It's actually uh, the oldest uh, uh, and where the major city comes in of that general area. That's right, I'm taking dominance, stepping over you with my DM Fiat and my big belly. And I'm saying that Medina was the major city for the longest time, uh, but because it moves, it makes it uh, less of a power than what it used to be back in its heyday. Cool. Uh, David, what's the name of your country? I'm in area number two, right? Mm-hmm. Segundia. <laughs> okay, why? Because <laughs> it's the second landmass on, <laughs> on the map. We uh, okay. watched Stardust recently. and uh... Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we've got Tercius, we've got Quintus, we've got... You know, Segunda... <laughs> So no particular reason other than it's the second. No, no, serious, <laughs> uh, seriously. Um, uh, the city of Beryl is what it's called. Beryl is what I'm going to call it instead of Segundus. 
whatever. The land now, is barrel. Now I got to change my goddamn name. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And why barrel? Uh, because of the silver light reflected from the blinding white sands. So Ooh, very nice. Uh, I called uh, land mass three sentia uh, because it is a very windy place filled with high mountains that pour over natural wildflowers, giving it a very uh, aromatic scent, something that probably Adventure Sense has in their inventory. Uh, but because the winds swirl and turn over the colorful wildflowers, uh, it just smells great there. It doesn't smell like a sewer like these other two worlds are apparently going to be. I mean, Thanks. Wow. <laughs> I was wow. going to say with those high mountain passes, I bet you that wind just comes really barreling through right the center. Oh, nice. Nice tie in there. Yeah. Uh, so next up is who lives there, Kyle? Uh, you got single, you got multiple races. What do you got? Uh, like I said, this <clears throat> is uh, um, the ruling class is fey uh they didn't used to be but over time that's what happened uh and this is a city like i said of of vagabonds and hobos because essentially you move into what would be your house uh for let's say a 10 day and then you have to move all your stuff out and move it to where your house is growing again which is maybe a mile or two away from where it was. It's a city constantly on the move. If you know what I'm referencing to call the city, then uh, kudos to you. <laughs> <laughs> no but, clue. No. So, yeah, essentially, um, over the course of 10 days, the city literally grows itself into a skyline. And then it goes back into the earth and it grows up somewhere else. And it's just a constantly shifting city. If you stay in your house for too long, it'll die. So the only people who are willing to live there uh, pack light. They don't have a lot of belongings. Um, so, and it's those who are uh, more attuned to nature. So you might have forest gnomes uh, are a good population who are going to be there because they don't really rely on having a lot of belongings and they enjoy living in the trees because you know if you live in a tree house that's gradually shrinking eventually your own weight is going to be too heavy and you're going to break the branch and fall out of the tree and kill yourself that's actually how a lot of people die there sometimes uh and so it's populated by a lot of small folk that live in buildings made out of trees okay and okay. grasses and bushes the city it was a city that was made out of stone and wood um and a long time ago something happened that caused it to essentially imprint into a wooded forest so the stone eroded away and trees grew up in place of walls of stone and then like i said it just kind of grows becomes a full city over a course of a day and then it just kind of shifts and moves along it's really difficult to explain it, so that's um, why we're here. Yeah, so. exactly. Ask David, him. David, who lives? Who lives uh, in barrel? Uh, mostly uh, uh, a human uh, population, uh, nomadic tribes. Uh, finally united, uh, and later went on to found a city. Uh, tribes were scattered all across what's called the Argent Sands, and. Um, uh, of course that there was probably turmoil between the uh, nomadic uh, tribes and finally uh, an accord was reached and uh, they tried to settle on one central homeland and they united and that's where they're forming their capital city. So are they human or what? They're are they? human. They're human. Human. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are other visiting races, but uh, the majority of population is human. So. Okay. Oh, that's fair. Uh, over in Sentia, the uh, population has, is made up of two different components. One are mountain dwarves and one are rock gnomes. Uh, more about them later. Uh, humans have come to this area 
but there is a uh, substantial lack of farmland uh, available for use here. And while it might smell pretty, uh, surviving above ground is difficult. Uh, the wind, as Kyle correctly pointed out, whips through the area and does not make it easy to build structures that survive the environment. All right, oxymoronic here. How are the flowers surviving uh, these powerful winds blowing through? Or do they find like little cracks mm. and crevices in the mountains? And so you get this waft of pollen coming through and man, ooh, what if there was like this bad time of year where like this deadly flower blooms? Like every July or something like that, wind blows and the pollen literally kills any living creatures that are on the surface. I apologize. It's your thing, Frank. No, no, that's inspirational. I enjoy it. (laughs) Uh, I view the foliage, such as it is, as flocks. Uh, It'll pick any crack or crevice. Excuse me. It'll pick any crack or crevice and uh, 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 nature. finds a way in honor of Jeff Goldblum who plays D and D well, who gives a shit. I'm glad that he's having fun. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, they, uh, they cling on. They are cling on. They're cling on. Next up. Political structure, Kyle, what do you got? Uh, like I said, it is a Fey ruling class. Um, they are aloof. They are, alien uh and so you don't actually interact with them too often but this is a city where it's you go along with it to survive otherwise uh uh, you don't live in that city um and if you end up running across its queen at any point you make sure she's happy or you end up turning into a tree to uh flow along with the city a so dictatorship, a fake, I guess. Fay queen. Got a it. Dark fay queen. A tragic fay queen. But everyone who sees it from the outside, it's like, hey, no, you don't want to live there. But then the rest of the country is so crazy that you don't necessarily not want to live there. Eh, we'll go on with that later. Okay. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of these uh, allude to other questions, so we really can't expound yet. Uh, the last uh, section of this will be making an adventure, folks at home. So that's where we're really going to put the uh, pedal to the metal. So, David, uh, you've already mentioned that they're nomads. Is is there a political structure? There is. It's uh, one of the things that we're, we're able to reasons why they united is uh, for a centralized belief system in a deity and so the form of government is a theocracy nice so, so. led by led by uh believe it or not the the clergy are actually priestess and they uh central deity is the lady of the light so and okay. um i mean men have a significant role uh in government too but it's it's mostly the the priests is, uh, the priestess that holds the highest position there. How is she appointed? Appointed uh, out of ser- series of trials through uh, knowledge. Uh, there, um, she's Wonder Woman. No, it's kind of like um, kind of like there's a council that. It's like deciding a pope, basically, and you decide yeah, okay. which uh, which priestess shall ascend to to be the high cleric, the high radiance. So, I, I like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, Sentia is ruled by the Triad Council, a three family group of dwarves who have held sway for several centuries. Their forefathers were the leaders in the attack against the rock gnomes. Ergo, uh, they wielded the power. They continue to wield the power. It is given down uh, by heredity, uh, but it can be male or female as long as it is first born of the clan. Uh, so three clans make up the ruling body. However, uh, the expansive uh, kingdom of the dwarves 
uh, has a variety of different feudal clans, uh, say dukes or duchies, uh, that also uh, handle the lower level of uh, rulership. Uh, but any major decisions are made by the family three. So uh, I thought that was the easiest way of doing it, honestly. Uh, next one up is social structure. Uh, are they traders, travelers, isolationists? What do you got, Kyle? What are the Fae doing? What are these people doing? Uh, boom. That is a question. And I'm trying to think about that. I didn't actually read any of the questionnaires. Uh, can you skip me for this uh, quick round and I'll answer near the end? David, what you got? Thank you. Or, do you. or do you want skipped as well? No, no, no. Uh, they uh, they're op they're open to free trade. So there are caravans where they sail across the uh, sands in these ships. You know, outfitted with outriggers to glide across the sands using the elementals to propel them forward. And uh, so they get trade caravans to lead from the from the city, which is centralized uh, in the in the center of the dunes. And they run these caravans out uh, to uh, to the edge of the wilderness. And from there, they have like a wagon caravan down to uh, port cities that have been set up along the coast. So they kind of have, I don't know, I guess what you would call like their version of like a silk road that cuts through. Mm -hmm. So. Nice. Uh, Kyle, you ready or you want me to go? Your choice. Yeah, I'll say that uh, because this city is a growing city, lots of plant life, um, it is open trade, but typically trade has to come to it. It is a self-sufficient city uh, uh, as far as it comes. Um, and so if, say, your party is looking for a rare uh, uh, flower, they may be able to find it on the seventh day in the growing district of the city. Uh, and if they miss that timing, they have to wait another 10 days for that section of the city to grow back again. Um, but other than that, it, like I said, they're, they're, I guess they're isolationists in this term. Uh, if you want something special to it, you have to come to them. But they don't hate outsiders. They don't hate outsiders. It's like, yeah, you just... So they're lazy traders. <laughs> sure. Lazy... Sense. I mean, considering they're lazy traders, they have, uh, <clears throat> as I'm mapping out my 10 days, they have uh, at least one, two, three, four... They have six days where they can live in their home semi-safely, and then they have to travel a couple of miles to where their home is going to grow in four or five days wait there for their home to grow and then live in there again for another four or six days before moving again is it the same house yes it grows identically so just imagine a city as it was uh and then just replace everything with trees wood grass bushes and then just imagine that there's only one day where a section of that city is exactly the way it used to be and then it starts to decay and wither as the next section of the city grows into its full bloom and then decays and withers and that's how the city kind of moves across the uh, country and so if you stay there too long you live in a rotted wooded house uh, if you stay there too early everything's too green to actually uh, support any real weight Okay, I can. I, I'll buy that. Yeah. Uh, uh, obviously, in Sentia, they're isolationists because even the rock gnomes live underground. Uh, the dwarves have no need uh, to go above ground. All that they enjoy is below ground. And being short and squat, they do not like the high winds of the dangerous peaks. Uh, they do not trade. They will not trade, only uh, amongst themselves, and not the rock gnomes for a reason to be determined later. Uh, but within the different clans, trading is acceptable. 
but they are all one nation underground. And you can highly finish. divisible. Highly, highly divisible. divisible. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that that is uh, them. Uh, the rock gnomes, same thing uh, for a reason that we will be discussing soon. Uh, religion has been touched on. Uh, mm -hmm. David, uh, we'll start with you. We'll try and keep uh, the okay. travel route. Uh, yeah, so I'm the one that touched it off by saying it was a theocracy. Mm -hmm. uh, again, their central deity is the Lady of the Light. Uh, she is like a, a patron of um, obviously the light, <laughs> <laughs> but of enlightenment, knowledge, arts, and things like that. Think of like the guiding light of knowledge. So that's one of the things that they're known for is they're, they're a seat of knowledge uh, for particularly uh, magic and arcana that uh, centralizes around the elements, uh, particularly air and fire and, um, and water also, uh, because water is a source of life for them, which they actually get. There is an aquifer. The whole place was, uh, before, uh, desert started encroaching and spreading among the, the, the continent. Uh, it was a tundra. So there's frozen aquifers, uh, beneath the sands and stuff like that. They also use that to, to harvest moisture out of the air uh, by the use of air and water elementals. It, it, is one of them Luke Skywalker? No. <laughs> <laughs> I could oh, throw be ridiculous. In there. Oh, that would be ridiculous. It's Duke Don Treader. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Screen Rust, nice. Rusty sand mover. <laughs> yeah, there that's we go. it. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, who do the Fae worship? Uh, in this case, uh, it is their uh, fey queen. Um, it's more of a, a cult religious system. Uh, there are nature clerics who come to the city to witness Sylvanus's splendor and everything like that. But if they're too open about it, they uh, they disappear into the woodwork. Sylvanus. Ba -da -ba -da. <laughs> Cool. Uh, does uh, your deity have anything to do with the moving city? No. The, okay. This is a fate brought on uh, uh, by the Fey Queen who rules the city herself. Cool. Uh, Facet, goddess of gems, is who the dwarves and gnomes both worship. Uh, again, there is a backstory here that we'll be touching on soon. Uh, she is responsible for what is known as the Temple of Divine Light, uh, which is the legend of finding the massive gemstone hoard for the dwarves uh, after they took possession of the land. They were not always here, but they have always worshipped Facet, uh, who is called side uh, by the gnomes uh, that is their religion uh, and they only have one deity no sub deities whatsoever uh capital city name david i haven't come up with one yet <laughs> i'll back I, to you <laughs> the, the perfect name that i had for the city i panicked and used it as uh, the name of the country so barrel barrel yeah well, now you can you can reuse it. Okay. I'll I mean, I, I think uh, the capital city of Beryl is Beryl. So. Okay. Yeah. And what's uh, its uh, interesting noteworthiness? Uh, an oasis within uh, the sands. So. Okay. Uh, unexplicable aquifers and things like that. Imagine like the the canals in Egypt and stuff. So. Okay, I'll, I'll buy that. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle, capital city. The capital city is Medenia. M-E-D-E-N-I-A. The growing city is its nickname, though. Funky cold? Medenia. Medenia. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. I had that second shot of Moderna Friday, and my bones were on fire all day Saturday. It was <laughs> That was probably something else with a fence post. Yeah, no, that's true. I did rub <laughs> up against a few of those. 
Very nice. Uh, I, I went stupid. I went Jewelvania is the capital city uh, where the seat of the uh, three families exists. Uh, it is a gem encrusted city. Uh, it's more of a temple. Uh, the tunnels that move in and around and about the mountains of this country all connect at this point. It was the site of a large jewel hoard, uh, again, hearkening back to the uh, light, uh, bringer of the light facet uh, slash side. And uh, it is just an open area. Uh, it is an open city, that, but that is where they hold the marketplace. So the entire structure is one giant city, but this is the focal point that unites all of the tributary tunnels uh, together. So uh, it's a stupid name, but it's a decent concept. Uh, <laughs> friends and foes of other countries. Uh, so do they, does your country have any arch enemy country or do they have any arch friend company? Uh, who? Who are we doing first? I got sidetracked. Okay, go ahead, David. That's me. Uh, m their, their biggest threat is uh, protecting their Silk Road. Uh, since they are pretty much out in the dunes and all that, there are very few enemies that can survive moving an army across the desert to you know, confront them or right. try to sack the city. Uh, friends are, are those that trade with them from, from other countries and ports and lands and things like that. So, okay, that works. Kyle, uh, the city is fairly or is utterly neutral, just about. Um, the only enemies it would have would be, um, uh, uh, priests of any sort of dark, uh, gods of poison or decay or rot would uh you know it's a nice little check next to uh, i'm cleric bob and i'm the guy who destroyed the growing city uh so herb east side <laughs> yeah yeah herb east side uh, okay i'm work. herb east side how you doing today <laughs> Uh, the dwarves have no friends whatsoever because, well, let's face it, they're dwarves and they're assholes and they're always good for my NPCs. I'm, I'm sorry, they have no friends. The enemies are the rock gnomes. Uh, and that's coming up in claim to fame here in just a second. What is the economy staple of barrel, David? Uh, the economy staple for barrel is probably gems, fine gems and things like that. Uh, that they use for training that they're able to mine uh, from the uh, veins that they find in the dunes and stuff like that. Plus, using our, our you know, arcane magics and stuff like that, uh, one of the things that they're able to do is to focus their mirrors and uh, create glass. And glass is something that's prized with... Uh, some of the local traders and things like that. They also have artists and artisans that make very beautiful geometric uh, pattern stained glasses for temples and things like that. So I like that. Uh, you don't uh, see many glazer based economies. Kyle, what do you got for the Fae? Um, in this case, uh, because people come to them, uh, it is rare. Um, and um, rare flowers, anything that grows, like I said, will appear at this city at some point, someday, somewhere. Um, hey, it's less of a city and more like a wonder of the world. And then, I don't know. So saying that there's an economy going on there is not really... Tangible? Yeah. yeah by that. Uh, they're dwarves and there are gnomes around. It's all gems and ore. Uh, I went common trope. Uh, what is the claim to fame? What is some kind of thing that your land is known for? Good or bad? I mean, it's tough to beat a moving city, but David, what do you got? There's a hot dog vendor named Bill who shows up. There the we go. City. There you go. 
That's the most oh. famous thing going on. He has a cart or some kind of craft that's like a, it looks like a hot dog. Could it be a wiener mobile or something like that? A cart that just moves along. <laughs> wow. So, uh, the You're thing jealous. that they're known for is their traveling bazaar that they have that they can set up along their their Silk Road. Um, now, as far as like uh, cultures and rituals and things like that, uh, mostly. Uh, I want to say uh, festivals surrounding uh, light and during uh, seasonal changes in light and things like that. They'll they'll have certain festivals like an equinox and things like that too. Sure, I like that. Kyle, what do you got? Frank, he's a hot dog vendor who shows up. I've got a growing city in my country. <laughs> Is that not draw enough? No, that's a, that works. Uh, I have the Temple of Divine Light. Uh, everybody knows about it, but very few people get to ever see it. Uh, some adventurers have actually discovered it, but never return to tell the tale except one, a drunken pirate named Steve. <laughs> There's always a drunken pirate There's named always Steve. a drunken pirate named Steve. Ah, uh, wow, this is taking longer than I thought. Uh, customs, rituals, David. Uh, customs and rituals, uh, uh, their cust wow, what would be their custom? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, they're artisans, so, um, their their thing is they they welcome uh, any interests in the art, art and sculpture out of glass and things like that. Uh, Thinking on the fly here. Sure. Uh, That's the name of the game. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that they're also good for, uh, since it's such a wide open spaces and things like that, is when night falls, just charting the stars and things like that and astronomy and stuff like that. So uh, one of their rich, uh, that's one thing that they're also <laughs> known for is charting the sands is cartography and things like that. So nice. I like that. Kyle? Uh, as far as rituals go, uh, the people everyday life, because it's kind of a first come first serve, uh, there is this ritual where, and you can kind of predict where the moving city is actually going to be in the next few days, is that if you want to live in your home, you actually have to go out, figure out where your home is going to be in the next 10 days, and you have to plant a special marker there, or claim it in some fashion or another otherwise it's up for grabs and you may live in your home one uh, uh one part of the week and next week you are homeless does tom cruise ever grab the stick with the yeah i was gonna ask <laughs> i knew it was no i have no idea what you're referencing because i'm no. a young man wow i've I never am. seen that movie <laughs> i don't even know what we're talking about so that's fine <laughs> Uh, the dwarves have the unusual habit of changing the curvature on their hammers so that it offers a melodic tune. The workers that go into the tunnels often select each other for their same acoustic ability, ergo when the bosses or never foreigners uh, come through, when the workers are banging their hammers, it actually makes music in the tunnels. Uh, that is their custom slash ritual. Ooh. Wow. Uh, magic. Yay or nay, David? Very much yay. Kyle. Yay, but no druidic magic. Mm, that's weird. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's Everything odd. has this life cycle, but if you try to expand upon the natural life cycle of uh, the growing city, it's uh, seen as a reason to uh... nice. So your growth spells, um, plant growth, and all that stuff. If you cast it in this city, you will be killed. Cool. Uh, dwarves hate magic. No like magic. No like none. Magic. Zero magic. Uh, what is the major or legendary, either or monster in your land? Legendary monster. Legendary or common, either one. Uh, I 
would you want have... to go first or you want me to go first? Yeah, I would say like a like a hardened barrel, like silvered <laughs> um, uh, boulette type creature that goes under the sands and things like that. That's the big bad. There's a big one out there. A really big one. A legendary boulette. A legendary. Kyle? There is an ancient green dragon, but not as uh, D&D 5 years see it today, but it's more of that. It only has two legs. The wings, not even wings, really. It slinks, it crawls. It's more of that clever, poisonous man, maybe slightly bigger than an average man-sized dragon, but it's been around for so long that it knows how the city moves, uh, and it will plant itself years ahead of where the city will be. Uh, and when the city grows over it, that's when it kind of comes out, takes anything of value that may have appeared in the city since the last time, uh, uh, and stashes it away, as well as eat some of the people that are there. Interesting. Uh, in the land of Sentia, it's elementals, specifically air elementals. That is why it is so gusty. High on the highest peak in the mountains is the home of the god of the air elementals. And that is why this place is so windy. And that is why it is so fragrant, because the god of the air elementals enjoys aromatic beauty. Uh, interlopers on the land above ground are dealt with swiftly and harshly. Uh, it used to be populated. However, now all of the stones have crumbled and are overgrown. Uh, so air elementals populate the region, including the djinn. Uh, final stage. Uh, what's one historical fact that you would base the adventure on? Mm. Anybody got something? <laughs> uh, I, I I can go if you need it, or Kyle the can go. Hist um, because of the way the city moves and grows, um, it doesn't actually matter um, if there is. And if we look at the map, I don't know if it's uh, pulled up anywhere that people it, can it, see it. Yeah, it is on the bottom left for them. Okay, uh, in the little oceanic sea right there the mm -hmm. letter C, there is this ruins up top there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that actually used to be a city a long time ago, but the growing city actually hit it. Uh, and so what happened was uh, people got squished in between the regular walls of the city and the new growing walls of the city. And so it ended up... It's horrible. <laughs> it is absolutely terrifying. And so... The city is known for, it doesn't matter what's there previously, It the city grows exactly how it does every single time. And so um, the Hamlet, um, I'm going to go with my adventure a little bit. The idea is that the heroes are being called to a small hamlet that is located uh, somewhere in the city and uh, somewhere in the country. And the growing city is going to show up any day now they didn't notice that it was coming plants started growing up and people are getting trapped in their city and are going to be crushed killed uh, essentially this town is going to be destroyed and it's the party's job to just start moving people out of there cool i like that what you got david um historically the the tribes before they were United, one of the things that I said that they mentioned their commodity was gems. I mean, not only for the value of the trade, but because of their uses in magical components and also for pigments for their glass. And each tribe was also known for a particular gem that they mined, and it was reflected in the color of their clothing and things like that. Now, for the adventure, the rarest gem of, the, of them all that was hardest to get was Amethyst. And for some reason, that tribe disappeared. So the adventure would be looking for the, uh, you know, any tale 
uh, telltale signs of the the tribe of Amethyst and uh, their lost minds and try to discern what happened with that. So kind of kind of along the line, King Solomon's lost minds and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I got it. And purple denoting royalty. Yeah, mm-hmm. that works. Uh, dwarves and rock gnomes live on this continent. At one time, the dwarves were on the sandy area on the far right of the continent next to the bee. Their kingdom was sundered after a poor mining practice led to just a severe uh, shattering of the tunnels they moved west where the rock gnomes were at and war ensued they drove the rock gnomes back into their homeland uh, while the dwarves took over the rock gnomes land in the green area uh, the party starts as rock gnomes seeking vengeance and exploration as they clear some of the old tunnels to move about the periphery of the Dwarven Kingdom. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Uh, about a minute over. Uh, what do you think, Kyle? Uh, I think you took a long time, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah wasted yeah, a lot wow. of time there. Yeah. Yeah, no, I saw the map and I certainly expected it was going to be a lot more than what we had to do, so I'm glad it wasn't. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we didn't even get to Continent 4 and A, B, and C, so those were all going to be uh, other questions if we ran short on time, but as it turns out, no. you know, between Frank the Hot Dog Vendor and uh, your uh, dumbass moving city... You love the idea. <laughs> I do. I do love yeah, the right. idea. Uh, <laughs> David, what'd you think? I like it. Uh, it was fun. I love Iron DM. I mean, I just love it when we get together and just pull crap out of the air and just, you know, throw it together. Out of the air? What are you talking about? It's about. right out of my hands. Uh, yeah, that, there you go. On the peaks of my land. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I am. I, I really enjoy these sessions. They're, they're really, really good. So, and I like the theme of the moving city. I just kind of think of, you know, that it's ever changing, like on its own. So you never know when the city's going to change and stuff like that. And like you said, people can get caught up within it and stuff like that. It's, I was getting a crawl vibe is what I was. Yeah. Getting. It kind of just crawls along and it mm-hmm. crumbles and decays as it goes past. Yeah. Which is great yes. for farmers, which is why, you know, those small hamlets come in, but then it ends up coming back at some point And then it's like, ah, crap, we got to run. <laughs> <laughs> and of course the people there are like, yeah, no, this is where I live in seven days. And so everything in your uh, house now belongs to me. So, uh, fuck off. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The Interesting root. concept. I, I would have liked to have heard more about the Argent Sands from David, but sadly yep. no time. Um, you know what? Let's go long. Let's go. Come on, David. Tell oh, us more about on, the Come on. Come on. It's uh, not my show to run. I don't care if we go. That, that, that's true. Andy can blow me shit about going long. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm with these guys. The Iron DM show is one of my favorites simply because it's random. Uh, we don't know. I mean, I, I knew what was going to happen, but I didn't know what land I was going to get until they knew what land they were going to get. I didn't start until they got the information because uh, life is fair that way. Uh, but I always have a good time with these. Uh, if you're still watching, thank you. If you're a first time watcher, come back, join us again. Uh, if you're a long time watcher, an especially grateful thank you. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap like one of these shirts, uh, check out our store. Most importantly, if you want to join us on a one-shot, none this week or next week's talk show, uh, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail. Hit us up. We will get you on just like this past Saturday. Uh, big shout out. Thank you to Pirate Dog Dice uh, for dice that roll strangely well for me. And of course, uh, oddfishgames.com, makers of Adventure Sense, how to RPG with your cat. And if you're looking at writing much more gooder than me, check out their shine system. Frank, but right, good. <laughs> we, we got Kyle's cred campaign for all you horror aficionados on Thursday. Don't miss it. It is a blast. And then, of course, David and I will be coming on to Calamity, uh, maybe A-side, maybe B-side, 
don't know yet, haven't found out. It's all part of the surprise. Sunday, we will return with the Margu guys. And in two weeks on this show, we are going to unveil a big deal. Big. Oh, not my shirt. Okay. Not your shirt. (laughs) Big deal. Huge deal. Not shitting you. Huge. Okay. It's big. Uh, yeah. Folks, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., thanks for joining us. We will see you on Thursday with Kyle. Big dating game, Kiss and Wave. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Bye.